Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Angie. And, and together, together we, we are Twinfinity. And because it's Halloween, we are also Yang and Yin, which makes us Infinity. Yes. Yay. So happy Halloween. We thought we would do something fun. We've got our pumpkins here and our yin yang costumes. This is as Halloween-y dressed up as we get. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, no big masks for me. No, I don't think we're doing that. So because it's Halloween, we thought it was a perfect time to do a fun video and tell some different fun stories. But these are actually real stories, not like ghost goblin stories that, you know, are just things that people do at Halloween. So we actually wanted to talk a bit about star seeds. Why are we talking about star seeds when we're twin flames? We are talking about this because it's actually very common for most of us as twin flames, as light workers, and this is our yin yang as, as, dog. As, as dogs. And this is our, yeah, here's our, she's the black and white all together dog. So she blends in well with the whole theme. <laughs> Now she just has to calm down, okay? There be no calm down. Yeah, wired dog. So as twin flames, as light workers, as beings here to help ascend this planet, which is our whole mission of why we have come, we are often here as what are called star seeds. And just to explain a little bit about what a star seed is, if you understand, we all come from the same source, the same light, the same energy. And what we've done is just fractaled off from that energy and become individuated pieces of that, which then we call souls. And as souls, we can live anywhere in this vast universe. We can have lives all over the place. And some of us have chosen to have lives other than just on Earth. Sure, we've obviously been on planet Earth before because we wouldn't have come here for the very first time this time around, most likely. But a lot of us might have regular sort of homes or familiar home bases in other planets, other star systems, other places in the universe. And that's what makes us star seeds. Now, as star seeds, too, we usually come from places that are more advanced, that um, have beings that have lived longer lives, more lives. Um, we are what some people might term old souls. So we've lived a lot, which means as twin flames, as light workers, we are usually very advanced beings. And that doesn't, I, I don't like using that term because that then, you know, makes it sound like we're better than other people, which we're not. We're all equal. It's just some souls have been here more and been on other planets more, which allows them more experience, more knowledge, more of all of those things. So, we are going to share some neat experiences we had of experiencing ourselves as star seeds. When we were at Marla's workshop just a month ago. Yeah, this would be in the fall of 2019. Yes. So, Marla Kelly, if you know her from Twin Astrology, she had a Twin Flame Divine Partner uh, Sacred Union workshop in Niagara Falls, USA. And we were there as uh, co-facilitators with other people. And one of the things that happened in that workshop is Marla actually talked about, or I actually talked about past life regression, and then Marla did a group regression. So normally in a regression, you go to a previous life. But regressions don't always work that way. You can go to a future life. You can experience a life on another planet. You can experience all sorts of things. It's just your soul will give you whatever you need at that time for your uh, best growth and best advancement. And Rob and I both went to very different places than past lives. <laughs> yes. Uh, I didn't go to a past life at all. We have a dog that's just really, of course, as soon as we do a video, she gets this way. You come lay down and calm down. There you go. Also. I actually didn't go at all where I thought I was going to go. You know, if you're going to be in a past life regression, you think you would go travel back in your past somewhere, or maybe even do something like a life in between lives. But 
where I went, it was it was really odd because once I was under a little bit of the hypnosis, I actually started to drift around in the atmosphere of the earth. I just became energy. Like I didn't have a body. I just had a feeling of existence. Mm. And then I went out to the edge of the atmosphere and I stayed there for just a few seconds. And then I started to zip away from Earth. And I went past the area where Mars could normally be in orbit. Uh, went past Jupiter and then I swung out past Saturn. And I hung out there for a few seconds. Uh, there seemed to be an asteroid belt right in that area. Seemed to be about the limit of where I wanted to go. And then I started to come back towards Earth. And I slowly did. And I was just looking about the solar system with kind of an amazement that you would have as if you were actually out there just looking around having a bit of a vacation. But then I came back to the edge of the atmosphere and much like, you know, I've described this before in a couple of videos, but much like just spreading yourself out thin, I covered an outer layer of the atmosphere of the Earth. I'd Maybe like only 10% of it, but I've spread out really thin, but it was my portion of the atmosphere to protect. And I was way out on the outer edge where the atmosphere meets space. And... I felt really comfortable there. In fact, I felt interlocked with what felt like other beings, just like myself. Maybe it was other souls or other bits, but we were interlocked, sort of like when you shuffle a deck of cards together and you just have the edges oh, together and, and you have it, it and you have it squished them all back together. They're just just touching edges all over the place, but the entire atmosphere of the earth was covered by a whole group of us. Now it didn't feel like hundreds of us felt like maybe 30 or 40 of us. That's all it took to do that. Hmm. But then <clears throat> I started to deform, sort of like a very tall, narrow funnel, or like you'd imagine a, a tornado cloud even. Then I stretched down towards the earth, and as Marla was facilitating this regression, she mentioned something about going to a cave to to crystals to a portion of where the crystal core would be of the earth and instantly I was in a cave and there was a wall of crystal about oh I'd say maybe four feet long by two feet high it glowed mostly white but it had thousands of small points on it much like a quartz crystal if you've got a quartz cluster sitting on the edge of a window ledge or in a counter or wherever you would have one it was very much like a rock like that, just tucked in the edge of the cave. And through me, tiny specks of light. Now, I don't know whether the light was information or other souls waiting to incarnate. I can't really say for sure. But tiny specks of light came zipping through me and then embedded into this giant crystal. And each speck of light had its own node on the crystal. And it... And it wasn't at the tip of each node or at or right close to the base. It was right in the middle. And that's where they went. But it was but it was through me that they facilitated traveling from the very far edge of the, of the Earth's atmosphere into a crystal in the or into their node of the crystal. And from there everything seemed like it was my job to protect either the pathway or those specks of light or a bit of both. I was kind of like a guardian to that traveling portal for those specks of light. Then we were asked as a to imagine that there was a gift, a box, <laughs> a box that was something that we could open it up inside of it would be a surprise of sorts. Well, my my little box, my little gift box, it was sort of like a jewelry box of sorts. It was it was fairly big. It was like a half a cubic foot. And when I opened it up, it hinged on the back, and it was completely full of mirrors. And when I looked into it, 
I could see nothing. It was reflecting nothing. Not the cave, not an image of me or anything. I was just, just light energy. All there was was white in the glass. And then we came out of our regression. And I totally had a feeling that as energy, I had experienced through what was supposed to be a past life regression of sorts, but I had experienced a previous time of when I was just energy and what I had done. It was a very, very familiar path to me. And what was so cool about Rob's experience is we were home from the workshop, I think it was almost a week later, that you had finally processed enough of it that I could ask questions and I asked you and we were lying in bed one morning and you told me everything and you even used the word I felt like I was a guardian of the earth. Yes, right. It was totally my job. I was out there on the edge of the atmosphere just making sure that what was coming through was correct. It was light. It was it was nothing threatening. Although yeah. I although I, I didn't perceive any danger. It was my job to facilitate the traveling of the little specks of light. And then what was so cool, and this is how divine this, this path is, and this is why we're sharing this, is because you may have your own experiences either already or in the future, and then, you know, us sharing will help you feel a little less crazy. <laughs> um, but you know how this path is so synchronistic. I go to work, I log into my email, and all of a sudden I see this email from Pinterest that says, um, I think it, it was talking about Syrians and being guardians of the earth. And I'm like, what? So first of all, we have already connected, I think about a year ago, with the fact that Rob feels very connected to being Syrian. But we've never done much research or looked no, into it or did. read about it. Yeah, the odd chat just, with people who are more knowledgeable in these bits than we are. And, and when things come up, there's trends and traits and whatnot. It was like, oh, okay, it looks like I'm more Syrian than anything. And we just left it at that. Yeah, no, never no, really explored. No further research. No. So, of course, I mean, first of all, if you know anything about Pinterest, what it does is it'll email you with stuff that you've searched for or researched. I've never been on Pinterest looking for starseed information. I've been on there looking for wedding stuff when we were planning our wedding, and I go on there when I need new fingernail ideas for getting my nails painted. I've never searched for starseed stuff, so why it showed up in my email, and synchronistically the morning of Rob explaining all this to me, it was just amazing. So of course I clicked on it and I read it, and it was just so much of what Rob was describing, and you know the whole Syrian thing was very, very connective of what he had just told me that morning so it was just like oh wow your Syrian self was out there floating around protecting my little bit of the atmosphere and doing yep. my job guarding your earth yeah <laughs> looking after crystal homes yes yeah and my experience was just as unique <clears throat> and just as different I've done a lot of past life regressions. I've done QHHT. I've done quantum healing hypnosis. I've done life between lives regressions. So I'm very comfortable with regression and able to just go into it no problem. But I've never in all of my regressions experienced anything like this. So when things first began where Marla was guiding us through the regression, um, I started seeing myself as a blue being. And I had wings, and I was flying, and I thought, wow, am I in New Earth? That's what I thought initially that I was, because it was just so pristine and beautiful. Um, there was no pollution or toxins or anything like that. The air was pure. There was gorgeous colors everywhere, and I was flying kind of like through a beautiful waterfall. And I just felt so free in my ability to fly and it felt natural. It didn't feel like scary or anything like that. And then I landed on a, on a big cliff. And um, often when you do a regression, the regression therapist will guide you to look down at your feet. So when I looked down at my feet, I noticed my feet were quite big. They were blue. And then I looked at my hands. And interestingly enough, I only had two fingers and a thumb. I didn't have like all of this. So it was just this. 
Um, and I was quite tall. I was bald, had no hair, and I had no nothing on my body. I had no clothes. And when I looked down, I didn't even have genitalia. Like, I was completely androgynous. So it was just kind of strange. I was looking at myself going, what am I? This is weird. <laughs> and thank goodness I've done enough regressions because when you're new to regression, oftentimes your left brain, your ego will be like, what's going on? I'm making this all up. None of this is true. I was able to let go of that and just surrender to the process and just explore it and go, okay, well, I have no idea what this is, but let's play. So one of the things I even saw was um, a giant, giant leaf. Like it was huge. I, I can't even, you know, put it all on the screen here. And I could see that the, the veins in the leaf is where the sun would shine through. And that's how I got my energy. So I didn't eat food. I just got my energy from the sun. And it was odd though that it was shown to me that I got my energy through the leaf um, from the sun through the leaf rather than just the sun directly. I don't know if I could also get my energy directly from the sun, but it was just neat how I was shown the veins of the leaf, how the sun would shine through. And it was just so beautiful, like the little starbursts that would happen. And it would just fuel me. So um, there was more little things that happened, but nothing too significant to share at this point. But it was just really, really neat. And the one thing also that was neat is through this, um, I kept hearing the word Andromeda. And I'd heard that word before, but I honestly could not have told you what it was. I couldn't have told you if it was a planet, a star system, a being. Uh, I had no idea. I, I couldn't have even hazard a guess if somebody before this experience had said, you know, tell me anything about Andromeda. I wouldn't know. So when we came out of the regression, Marla had us write down, and Rob and I both still have yeah. all of our notes. She had us write down everything that we experienced. So I'll just kind of read some of my stuff just to make sure I got it all. So I had written down that I was um, blue and that I was like a bird slash human, uh, that it felt like it was a current alternate life that I was living, that I had wings and I was flying. Um, that I was a full blue being with two fingers and one thumb, and I was an androgynous. Oh, yes, and I lived in the trees. That was what was so neat. Those same leaves that I would get my energy from the sun shining through them, I would wrap myself in those, and that's how I would sleep. Um, very much like, um, what's that movie that we love? Avatar. Avatar. Yes. It felt very much Avatarian. Other than, you know, the Avatars have stuff on their face. I didn't have any of that. I just was completely blue. No other colors. Um, no hair anywhere on my, my body. Uh, yeah, and then I was saying the, the light in the veins of the leaves is my energy. I don't eat food. So it was just absolutely incredible. And because I had heard the word Andromeda... What I did after I wrote down all my notes and everybody was still writing from the session, I actually went on my phone and I Googled Andromeda because I'm like, I have no idea what this is. Does this, mm -hmm. How does this link? What? What is this link? And I'm going to actually just um, pull it up because I was fascinated what it said. So it says um, that... Andromedans are beings that obviously live on Andromeda, and there are several different kinds. So some do have hair, some aren't blue, some are. There's, there's different ones. And it said one of the races is seven to nine feet tall. They're winged humanoids existing in a higher dimension. Um, so I was just absolutely blown away that this was all real because a part of myself you know when I came out of the regression thought I had made it all up I was like okay well that was a neat little experience but completely not true until I pulled up my phone and then I was just wowed so I'll just show you even like it shows oh, I don't know how well that'll show up the reflection it even shows their their blue selves so very very cool and why we wanted to share this with you guys is because we know other people are experiencing these things too. We are tapping into our higher dimensional selves because we have come here with that knowledge to share with the earth, to 
bring all of this knowledge, this love, this higher um, technology even, to help with the world's advancement and um, ascension. So totally cool stuff. So if you're experiencing this too, we'd love to hear your stories, your experiences. There's many different planets. I used to think I was Palladian, and not to say that I'm still not. Um, and actually, when I read further about Andromeda and Andromedans, it says they're very connected with Palladians. So, and they're also very connected with angels, which makes sense why I love angels so much, too. Totally yeah. all connects. And then the whole wing thing, right? So cool. So it's fascinating when you learn more about who you are, why you're here, I know some people on the Twin Flame journey, and us included, when we were going through it, you get stuck in the challenges, and you're like, oh, this is so hard, and this is so painful. But when you can, you know, have experiences like this, it helps you remember the bigger picture of why we're here, what we're here to do. And there's so much more to this journey than just being with your Twin Flame. Not that this is bad. No. It's part of the fun of yeah. being together. But we're here for a grand purpose, and we all have um, a higher, higher power that we connect to within ourselves, not just externally with Source's power. We are all from other star systems. You might be Palladian. You might be um, Avian. You might be, uh, I can't even remember some of the other ones, uh, Andromeda, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ones. And and don't worry about where your journey is right at this point. I was thinking about this earlier today before we, well, I knew we were going to be doing our video tonight, but I was thinking 25 years ago, I was nowhere near here. <laughs> no. I, I, I couldn't even begin to even be in the same room of people that would be talking like this. And now I am one. It's been a long journey. And whether you're just at the beginning of the journey and going, well, that's way out there on the edge. That's why we choose Halloween to do this. You know, exactly. If you're going to talk about stuff that's out on the edge, you might as well choose Halloween. <laughs> but uh, to the point now that my poor left brain has been beat into submission so many times that it just sits back and decides that it just needs to let things happen. And then it can analyze it later if it needs to. I, I Things are just so much different for me now. And it took a lot of years to actually allow experiences to happen. So whether you're this far into experiencing alternative places that you may have been or alternative things that you've done other than just living as a 3D creature, whether you've stepped far beyond that and completely understand and have many stories to tell, or whether you're just on the edge of going, well, yeah, it may be possible, but I don't know if I ever, ever, ever could be there, ever could figure that out. Don't be afraid to tell your story. It's, it's, yeah, let us know about that because this is just totally mind-boggling for me. I'm, <laughs> I'm still sorting and filing. I haven't been able to 100% put this all away into a happy place and say, okay, let's take the next experience. Whew, I'm still breathing like I've just finished a marathon and I, I need time to recover between all these big chunks of growth. <laughs> and Angie finds it so easy. Yeah, I've been in regression so many times. I've been twice. But, and, and now but that's I've, just to show you. And my whole past three months has now been boggled up with alternative thoughts. Oh, for somebody that's only had two regressions in their entire life, look at that. That's an testament to um, several things. Regression therapy and how powerful it is. The masculines and how much they really can get out of their left brain and, and surrender to the bigger picture. You know, because so many people doubt and think, well, my masculine's never going to get there. Forget it. Hello. Here's a perfect example. <laughs> Mr. Grounded here is all of a sudden flying uh, around the earth. And are zipping here. around past Saturn and back. <laughs> Whoa. Who lengthened my leash? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long ways to go. Oh, boy. So, yes, we wanted to share to um, 
let you know that there's more to this journey. And if you're experiencing this thing, these things and you think you're nuts, or maybe you don't think you're nuts, hopefully you don't, but uh, we would love to hear your experiences if you have them. And um, just remember the bigger picture. We are all here for so much more than just union. We're here to do awesome, exciting things. And we're here to bring our higher multidimensional selves here with us. So feel free to tap into that within you because it's there. And we're here to pay attention to the dog when the dog jumps up and Apparently. wants to have attention. Yeah, we're trying to do a black and white video and she's got her pink. She fits. Out. Well, she got some pink. But yeah, yeah. But otherwise, she does white. fit. Yes. 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 Do, so, we have, do we have anything else? I don't think so. I was just going to say we'll leave it at that. Let us know if you have any interesting stories to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Love to hear them. And happy Halloween! Yes, happy Halloween! Hope you have fun and are safe and get to dress up in crazy costumes. Oh! As, as we say, this is our craziest. Yeah, this is crazy as we get. Maybe next year I'll talk you into something really wild. I have no idea what that is. Yin and Yang with a party at. There we go. It'll be 2020. we got to do something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Until then, we love you guys. And we do. And we will connect again soon. Bye. Bye.